something like a sneeze. The virus is traveling on respiratory droplets. As it moves into our airway, it's looking for cells in our body that have protein surface markers that match the virus. Okay, so let's say this is COVID-19. Searching and finding a cell, those purple bumps or receptors are on our own cells, such as the ACE2. The virus is going to lock onto that, and it's going to be accepted as part of our body. Only for a while, though. We're going to destroy it, yeah? All right, they mutate, and that's why we had different kinds of variants of COVID, because their RNA is, doesn't repair, at least not easily. Capsid is the shape, so here we have swine flu under the microscope. SARS-1 the deadly Ebola. And then here's the story I was talking about above. You see, the virus has surface markers that are gonna match with our surface marker. In the case of COVID, our ACE2 is what COVID wants to attach to, and then it's gonna move into our body. Okay, they can collect the DNA of whoever they infect. For example, H1N1, not that long ago. It stole DNA from pigs, humans, animals, and so it has a combination of different genetic material. Yeah, it's molecular hijacking of their hosts. I mentioned the uh, mutation like beta in South Africa. So COVID-19 beta has some genes from South Africa, all right? Now, how they reproduce is kind of wild. There's two ways. First is lytic. It may feel terrible, but generally we recover from it. So the virus is going to bind. This is a story we just saw, by the way. The virus is going to latch on to our uh, ACE2 and tie that up, which weakens us. And then it's going to trick our body into making more viruses. So whatever you have for breakfast, some of that food energy is going to be used for making viruses. And then we get sick and we sneeze and we spread it. All right. And that's the outbreak when it starts to spread. Now there's a deadly pathway, which I'd like to go through. This is what I just covered, the lytic. You see, you get sick, but then you destroy it. Lysogenic is different, um, but before we go into lysogenic, let's just check about how these vaccines work. Because when we inject a vaccine, here we go, we're going to take some of the, the DNA from that virus, well, RNA, we're going to inject it, but only a piece of it, right? Only a piece of it. And the reason we do that is so that our body learns how to detect the surface proteins. Do you remember that story? The virus has surface proteins. Now, the vaccine, here's what happens. Our defense cells, such as macrophages, are going to communicate with each other, and they're going to tell other cells, hey, we're under attack, man, and they're wearing this certain type of surface protein. It's a spike protein. If you see it, destroy it. And so our immune system builds, and it's ready, and it's waiting. Its one purpose in life is to kill and destroy anything that has that surface marker. And so here you see COVID is being destroyed before it can attach. Remember that story? They want to attach to our receptors. We can stop them. We can even destroy our own cells that are infected. So to me, vaccines are like miracles. I've had many of them. I've had rabies vaccine in Africa. I had hep and yellow fever vaccine when I worked in India. I love vaccines. <laughs> okay. All right, back to the story lysogenic. This one is a genetic disease, and you can see why. Okay. Here's the story. 
the virus injects its RNA. Sounds familiar, right? Same as lytic. But here's the difference. In this thing, like a cold or a flu, we get sick, and then it's over. Hopefully it doesn't kill us. Lysogenic, it attaches to our DNA, and then every time there's a mitosis or cell division, our body makes copies of it. And this is the window phase. We, did, we test negative, okay? There's no sign that we even got infected until something happens. Man, we get depressed, we get chilled, and that viral DNA kicks in, and now we have an outbreak. But it's never over, okay? We can't cure these because they are part of us. I'm part, I'm part virus DNA now, okay? And, and that happens, okay? We have things such as uh, genital herpes. That's the uh, herpes simplex virus number two. But we also have HSV1. If you ever had a cold sores around your mouth, it's a real common uh, form of lysogenic. Lives on the ganglia around your mouth, and too much sunlight or worry can bring it to life. Now be careful because sometimes HSV1 can be transmitted during oral activities with sex, so um, be careful with that one. Right? Be careful out there. Okay, general warts, HPV uh, papillomavirus. When my daughter turned 13, I had her get the uh, HPV vaccine series. I mean, she was a good kid. She didn't need it. But one day, she, she might need it. And that way, she won't get cervical cancer. So we gotta we got to protect our children. Okay, okay, this is a whole new group, different than viruses. They are called prokaryotes. Their DNA and organelles are kind of scattered. Very different than like human cells. Bacteria everywhere, right? I, mean, I think we know that. Uh, the cell wall, it helps us to identify different bacteria because we use a crystal violet stain. And if it stains purple, we call that bacteria gram positive. If it doesn't stain purple, we call it negative. Now you might think, well, who cares, you know? Well, we do because if you're sick and we do a throat culture and we put it on this petri plate with lots of bacteria, you see that halo? That says, hey man, this whatever is in this white pad is killing the bacteria. Yeah? So if it's a penicillin gram positive swab, then we know, okay, we're going to put this patient on penicillin or a penicillin derivative. But hey, if, if penicillin is not working and we use erythromycin, we go, oh, okay. So the, the, the gram staining and the cell wall, very important in identifying bacteria. Bacteria have a capsule, such as Streptococcus pyogenes, and it's in our throat, many of us, just laying there inactive. But if we get chilled or exhausted, depressed, we start getting that scratchy throat. And it, it slips away from our macrophage, you know, our defense cells. Kind of like a wet watermelon seed, you know, you try to squeeze it, it pops out. So that sore throat is telling you, hey man, I, I made a mistake. I let myself get weak and now I've got to take care of myself, okay? Chicken soup, right? It's a good one for that. It's better than most medicines. Okay, glyco glycocalyx is just a sticky film or biofilm. For example, on our teeth. If you wait uh, to brush your teeth, you get a biofilm that's removable. But if you wait too long, like 24 to 36 hours, then you get tartar because that biofilm, which is a bacteria, is going to collect calcium. And now it's harder to remove, yeah? So, yeah, that's the reason why we got a floss. I like this uh, cocoa floss. <laughs> it's kind of pricey, you know, but uh, you might as well make flossing a joy, right? Okay, onwards. Endospores, okay, here's the story. If you have an endospore spore type of bacteria, you can kill it with antibiotics, or your body can kill it, but... You cannot kill it when it enters into its endospore stage. And you can boil this bacteria, freeze it, and it will not die. And that's why when you take 
uh, antibiotic medicine, you can't just take it for three days. Because what if during the three days some are in the endospore stage? This happens, right? People on day four, they go, hey, I'm feeling better. I'll just keep these pills for next time. But then the endospores are still alive. And then they become active. And then like seven, eight days later, they got the same thing again going. All right, so finish your antibiotics. Kill those buggers all the way dead. Now I have exotoxins, which is the word right here. And a, a famous exotoxin from a bacteria. Here you see an example of the uh, exotoxin coming out of the cell wall. Is botulinum toxin. And in this case, let's move it to where we can see the actual injection. Uh, the Botox. Now, you may not want to watch this. But what we're going to see is the um, Procerus. Yeah, that's a good muscle. Uh, or the corrugator. Let's see. Going for the corrugator. Now, myself, okay, I would have my patient wearing eye protection. Can you see what I'm talking about? Okay, I would cover the eyes without putting some eye protection on my patient. But anyway, Botox, muscle relaxant. It's not just for the face, all right? Sometimes it's used for spasms in other parts of the body. Now, tetanus is the opposite. Here we have a uh, relaxation. Here in tetanus, we have a, a contraction. Right? And it can be deadly. In fact, both can be deadly. A Clostridium difficile, which is what we're seeing here, can be a serious GI tract infection. Like you have patients that are on antibiotics in the hospital, and the antibiotics weaken them. All right? We don't. Sometimes we have to hold back on the uh, and let the body do its job. All right, different shapes. So we have caucus that are round, diplococcus two, strep is a chain, tetrad four, staph is a cluster. Bacillus can be rod shaped in a chain. And then we have different types of spirals, like spiral keats, spirilla. Now you might think, well, I don't really care. You know, what are all these bumps and so what? Well, what if this is your throat culture and you're feeling terrible and we say, uh-oh, oh, a clump of these little dots, that's staphylococcus. Or here, we have a chain, okay, this is a nasal swab. Okay, now we know what to treat you with because we have some kind of bacillus. Uh, hopefully you don't have a spirochete. This could be um, a, uh, sexually transmitted, right? So you can see how this is important. This is diplococcus, uh, maybe a tetrad there. All right, so under the microscope, this is what those little buggers look like. That's this is when we measure the rate at which they multiply. And this generation time can be super fast. Like we have a little time lapse going on up here. You'll see how fast something like E. coli, every 20 minutes it reproduces. And so in a single day, one billion. Now you see this time lapse? That is why you can't leave warm food out for very long because if you get something like E. coli or even worse is parafringens, like they have a generation time of 10 minutes. So uh, if you ever go to a place where, uh, look at that, man, it's disgusting, huh? All right, let's stop that. All right, so uh, parafringens tends to be in areas where the food is kept warm and it's big batches of it. All right, flagella for swimming. Think of cholera, okay? Cholera around the world kills so many people, especially children, because of dehydration of diarrhea. Okay, diarrhea, we're losing valuable water. Tanya, one of uh, my uh, pre-nursing students, now a nurse, worked in Africa. I'm so proud of her. Pili, this is how some bacteria reproduce, okay? Bacteria have sex. All right. It's hard to believe, but they, uh, uh, gonorrhea, that's how gonorrhea has become so resistant to antibiotics is because they mutate and they transmit their genetic material. Wow. Thanks for listening. That's a crazy bunch.